Did I just spend so long on my makeup for a 10 second intro? Yeah, I did. Hi, my name is Yana and today I'm going to show you how to crochet these jellyfish, the pink one specifically. And if you're interested in more crochet room decor, make sure to subscribe because I have a bunch of room decor ideas that I'm going to make in crochet since my room is... we don't talk about that. So if you're interested, make sure to subscribe and let's just get on with the video. All right, so for this project, we're going to be using two colors and a white. So one light color and one dark color and then just white. And we're also going to be needing a stitch marker and a darning needle. I'm going to be using a four millimeter crochet hook and you're going to obviously need scissors. And now we are just going to start with the white yarn. So to start off, we're going to grab our white yarn and then we're going to be making a magic circle. To make a magic circle, you want to lay the yarn like this with the tail end facing you. Then we're going to grab the working tail and then we're going to flip it around and make a cross like this. So we're going to grab it, flip it around and then make a cross. And then we're just going to leave that there. We're going to grab our hook. We're going to slide it under the first loop or the first string, grab the second, twist it and then we're gonna pinch it with our hands our fingers and then we're going to grab the working yarn and make a chain to secure the magic circle and to test if the magic circle works you're just gonna pull on the tail end and if it closes then it works if it doesn't then try redoing it now we're going to insert six single crochets into that magic circle so we can pull it smaller, pinch it with our hand so that it doesn't really move, insert our hook in there, and then we're going to make a single crochet. To make a single crochet, you want to insert your hook into the stitch or into the magic circle, and then we're going to yarn over, pull up one, so we have two on our hook. Then we're going to yarn over, pull through two. And that is how you make a single crochet, really simple. And now since I've done two, I'm going to make four more so that we have six in total. And now once you've made six single crochets, we're going to slip stitch into the first single crochet that we've made, which is right here. We're going to insert our hook in there. We're going to pull up one and then pull it through all. And that is how you make a slip stitch It's just to pull through everything and now we're going to start the row off with making two single crochets in every single stitch so we're going to work one in here now we're going to grab our stitch marker and we are going to mark our first single crochet that we've made so that we don't get confused now we're going to place another one in the same stitch and that is what we're going to do for the entire row we're going to make an increase in every single stitch and that is what we're going to call an increase an increase is going to be two in every stitch except when i say that it isn't so an increase two is what we're going to make in every single stitch and yeah so once we're done And once you have reached the stitch marker point, we can take it out and then we are going to be slip stitching into that stitch so that we have a full circle. For the next row, we are going to once again start off by making one single crochet and then we're going to place our slip stitch right into that first single crochet. And for this row, we're going to make an increase into every other stitch so that means we're going to make one single crochet and then an increase two so we're going to make one single crochet two single crochets one single crochet two single crochets all right now i've reached the end of the row once again and i'm going to take out my uh, stitch marker and then i'm going to be slip stitching into the stitch that i marked it marked it in and now for the next row we are going to be so we're going to make one single crochet and then grab our stitch marker and mark now we are going to make two single crochets in separate stitches before we make an increase 
So after making two separate single crochets, we're going to make an increase in the next stitch. And that is what we're going to do for the next rows. So for the next row, we're going to make three separate single crochets before we make an increase. For the row after that one, we're going to make four separate single crochets before we make an increase. And that is how we're going to go for the rest up until we have six single crochets between every increase. So for this row, it's two. So we're going to make two single crochets separately before we make an increase. And that is how we're going to continue it on. And I will show how to do that. What I mean, I will show it once again in the next row. But if you understand it, you can skip to the next chapter in the video. All right, I am once again at the end of the row. So I'm going to remove my stitch marker and then slip stitch into that stitch. And for this row, we are basically going to do the same thing, but we're going to Instead of doing two separate single crochets, we're going to make three separate single crochets before we make an increase. So that's one, two, three, and then we're going to make an increase. So we're always going to add on one separate single crochet before we make the increase. So for the next row, it's going to be four single crochets separately before we make an increase. And for the row after, it's five. And for the row after the one with five, it's going to be six. And that is where we are going to be stopping. All right, I just got done with making how many rows was that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So in total, I have seven rows now. And the last row, I made six single crochets in between every increase. And now for the next three rows, we are going to make just a completely normal regular single crochet row so grab your stitch marker we're gonna make one single crochet in the next stitch mark up the first stitch and now we're just gonna work single crochets in every single stitch for the next three rounds so now i'm just gonna finish off my last row of single crochet now we're gonna switch to a different color and so this is how it should look like. It should have this little like shape. And if yours is still, I mean, if yours is like this, for example, that's, that's just fine. You can just turn it around, but it should have this rounded shape of like being like a lid maybe, or just cause this is going to be the top of the jellyfish if you haven't noticed, but it should have this like rounded shape or have like an indent or whatever. And now we're going to switch to the lighter color. So we are just going to cut off the white. So chain one and then pull. And then we're going to grab our scissors and cut off, pull tighter. And now we are, we have just this thing. And now we're going to grab our lighter color. So now we're going to make a slip knot. And to make a slip knot, we want to form a circle with our string. Take the loose end and make a line through that hole place your hook under and pull through like that take it off the hook we're going to go where we started just now put our hook through that and then place the slip knot like onto the hook once again now we're gonna pull through but only pull the slip knot through and not the like excess string or whatever we're going to chain one. Now we're going to continue making single crochets around the entire row, but we're going to make it with this pink color. That is what we're going to do for the next four rows. So we're going to have 10 rows in total, and we're just going to make four rows of pink. Now I'm done with the pink, and we're going to work on the, like, on this part, like, I'm not really into jellyfish anatomy, but just these things. Um, if there's even a name for that, but there probably is some like Latin name, but whatever. To start it, we're gonna continue with our light pink or light color. So we're gonna chain three, and now we're gonna place one double crochet in the same stitch that we chained the three from. And to make a double crochet, you wanna yarn over, so you have two on your hook. You wanna insert your hook into that stitch, Yarn over, pull up one. And now we're gonna yarn over, pull through two. 
yarn over pull through two. That is how you make a double crochet. After you've made that one double crochet in the same stitch that the chain is coming out of, we're going to place four double crochets into the next stitch, and that is what we're going to do for the entire row, so an increase four into every single stitch. Again, how to make a double crochet, you want to yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull up. Now you have three on your hook. Now you want to yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And we want to do that three more times into the same stitch. I'm just going to do that for the entire row. Alright, once you are done with the frizzy bits around the whole side, we are going to connect it up by slip stitching into the first chain or the top chain of the chain three right here. We'll stab our hook through somehow. Slip stitch and that is how you do it. So this is where you should be. And now we're actually going to move on to the like embroidery of this top part so we can cut this off. Now we're going to pull tight and then we're going to cut it off at a weavable length. Since this is a like a, an important part to weave in. And now we're going to start off with the embroidery part. So for this part, I'm going to be using the darker yarn. Honestly, you can use whatever yarn you want. Again, you can use a lighter color, but this is what I'm going to be using. This circle is a nice size, so I'm going to stab my hook through that. Then I'm going to grab my slip knot from the other side. And this part is honestly, there may be a better idea on how to do this, but this is just how I do it. And now I'm going to go through Okay, so now I'm going to go into every single stitch. So this is where I am. I'm going to put my crochet hook into the next one. And then I'm going to grab the yarn underneath, pull it up, and make a slip stitch so that it is like a stitch so that, you know, it like becomes embroidery. And this is what it looks like from the top. Um, I'm going to stab it in there, grab the yarn, and pull it through and if you're like oh my god you have magical powers how can you see the yarn i feel it since my hand is under i feel where the yarn is and i can feel where i know where the hook is so i go through and then this is where i'm at like this is how i hold the yarn underneath i pull up pull through so i, I don't really know how to show this but i'll put my hook into the next stitch and this is where my yarn is laying with my hand. I feel with my middle finger, I feel like where the yarn is and where the hook is. With my pointing finger, I have a like a like a tension on the yarn so that it's tight. And so that's how I do it. Obviously, there may be better ways on how to do it, but this is just my way of doing the embroidery. And now I'm just going to go around in a circle since you crocheted in a circle so there's going to be space in between every single uh every single crochet that i'm going to use to follow this circle and 
this is what you can basically do for any pattern since this is slip stitching on top of crocheting you can basically do whatever you want to i'm just going to follow a circle and then make lines in between and i'll show you how to do that once i'm done with the circle Once you're done with the circle, we are going to make uh, lines in it. So what I'm going to do is where like we've closed it in, right? We're going to go into the one that is like above the hook so that we can make two stitches into the circle. And this is how it should look like. We are just going to move two stitches into the middle and we are also going to do that on the opposite side so what we're gonna do now since we gotta do the other sides as well so here 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 you know just multiple lines we're gonna have to cut this yarn short so that we can actually go through it unless we'd have to cut this every single time so i'll just show you what i mean so we're gonna end this part and make it longer so we're going to estimate how long we would need for everything so i'm just gonna say here's a line here's a line here here so we just cut off like oh, this is like difficult to say how much because i also wouldn't know but this is kind of just a guess i'm just gonna put the yarn maybe like three times around the circle that we've made and then i'll cut it off put the this aside and now we're going to be working with this alone so we're going to grab the loop that we just made and we're just going to pull through so pull through until we have this secured so that we can't open it now we're going to stick our hook under in here and then we're going to pull the loose end back out so that we have this clear like circle i guess and now we're gonna make another line on the opposite right here and that is just to secure the line since if i would move right on the next one right here then it wouldn't really be parallel so we're just gonna move it we're just gonna make it here obviously if you are really good with parallels and whatnot and just like guessing or whatever you can do whatever you want i may have not cut the line long enough but whatever so i'm gonna pull it across like this then i'm gonna stick my hole my my hook through here since it is across from that line i'm gonna stick it through here pull it up so that I have this like loop, I guess. Now I'm going to, just like in the other side, make two slip stitches across the middle so that I have this line. And now we're going to once again pull through this loop. But this is what I mean. So my circle isn't really symmetrical, but that's fine, it's whatever. Honestly, I don't even know how that happened. Whatever, it's irrelevant because this isn't really what you can see. But this is just for added cute detail. And now we're going to work on the things on the side. So for my pattern, I'm always going to do it on two full slip stitches away. So you can count this as one, but I don't really. I count this as one, one, one. Now I'm going to punch my hook through this stitch. And I'm going to go into the next two stitches and that's what I'm going to do for the entire row. So once I'm done, I will come back to show you how it should look like. So now I'm done with making this small embroid embroidery on the top. I may do some later on around the side, but I'm not really sure um, that, I mean, you can do anything you want. You can make more, but this is it for me. Now we are going to make these curly things um, on the bottom of the jellyfish so to do that we're going to start off by making a slip knot and then we're going to chain 60 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 32 33 34 35 36 37 38 39 40 41 42 43 44 45 46 47 48 49 50 51 52 53 54 55 56 57 58 59 60 61 62 63 64 65 66 67 68 69 70 71 72 73 74 75 76 77 78 79 80 81 82 83 84 85 86 87 
39, 40, 50, 52, 56, 54, 55, 56, 57, 59, 60. So I've chained 60, and for this, you can chain chain a random amount. I would just definitely start off with chaining um, 60, 50, 20, or just one amount where you just chain one amount that's more than 10, like 20 maybe, and then you can see how long your yarn works up with it. So for this, we are going to be working three half double crochets in every single chain, so that is an increase three. So to do that, we're going to yarn over, insert our hook into the stitch. We're going to yarn over, pull up once. We have three on a hook. And unlike a double crochet, we don't yarn over, pull through two. We're going to yarn over, pull through all three. And that is what we're going to do three times in that same stitch. Right, I just got done making my first um, spiral. I mean, honestly, I don't know what you would call it and this is how it should look like and you want to make this two more times so that you have two of these spirals and then we're also going to have chains these are just standard regular chains of white for jellyfish there's a lot of things that you can and should customize since it just gives a little more of your own self you know so how you would add on a white border you want to just make a slip knot and then just single crochet on top of the on top of every like half double crochet so we're just gonna make single crochets on top of every single half double crochet and that is how you get the white border which looks really good which is what i'm gonna do all right, now I've made my three spiral things. You can, if you want to, and I would definitely recommend it, make them all different sizes so that when they hang down, it's not all just... And I also wanted to clarify why yours may look like this instead of looking like that or like this. And that is because it just hasn't been curled the right way. And it's really hard to describe how to curl it. Um, you just got to twist it so that the middle, this is in the middle, like this part is in the middle and that uh, the outside is like you fold it up to the side you want it to be. Since often it looks like this when it should be like this. I, I don't know, it's kind of hard to describe what I mean, but uh, you just got to like twist it around until it fits like this and it curls together you should have one of your hat things three of these and now i'm going to make a bunch of chains with pink yarn Moving all of this aside, we're going to be working on the middle so that we can close it up. So basically what we're going to do is just repeat this circle that we did and make it so that it fits in here. So we're not going to make the few rows of single crocheting regularly. That is what I'm going to explain now. And for that, I'm going to be using this color since it is the color that I used for the frizzy bits or whatever i don't know and to do that we're gonna start off by making a magic circle once again and if in case you've forgotten how to do that we want to place the yarn like this with the tail and facing us and then we want to twist it so that there's a cross with the working yarn right there now we want to take our Two. crochet hook slide it under the first string over the second pull twist pinch and then we're gonna grab our working tail and make a chain so that it's all secure. Now we're gonna make six single crochets into that magic circle, just like we did at the beginning. And now, just like in the first circle that we made, we are going to be working two single crochets in every single stitch and increase every other stitch. And after that, we're gonna make an increase every other two stitches so just repeat the pattern that we did in the first row and i'm just gonna have the written pattern over here in the corner all right now i've reached the point where i have five single crochets between every increase and now instead of making one more row 
so that we have six single crochets in between every increase we are going to make two rows of just single crochets without any increases and that is because we don't want this plate to form like a circle we want it to be flat so that we can just pop it right over here and cover it up all right now i've made two rows of single crochets without any increases we are just going to focus on closing this hole and to do that we are not gonna cut off the yarn like we usually would but we're gonna grab a lot of excess yarn to close it off because we are going to be using our darning needle and we are going to be sewing this closed well we're gonna start to but not really since i mean this part is kind of doing everything so this is like kind of closing everything but we're gonna talk about that later we're first gonna grab enough yarn so that it's 100 percent sure that we have enough yarn so i recommend honestly going around the circle that you want to weave in like a bunch of times i still haven't found the right calculation on how to do it it's just kind of wishing for the best but always rather have more than have less so i usually go like three times around what i want to do just to ensure that i have enough yarn and this is how much i think is going to be an amount that's okay i'm going to cut it off and then pull it tight and now we're going to go through everything that we have all right now i have every single piece i need to assemble the jellyfish and then we're going to start off by grabbing our darning needle and yarning or well i don't know what you even call it but pulling the yarn through the back of the darning needle and that is because we are going to connect the bottom side to the jellyfish top but only half of it if that makes sense so how we're gonna go on about this is we're just gonna start right at the start we're going to insert our needle right here then we're gonna place our thing in the middle right where we want it there's no real way to do it in my opinion um but i'm just gonna go above this line because this is as you may notice i added like lines across the edge of mine so i want to cover that up obviously so i'm gonna go on top of that so i'm gonna go into the second row of the pink single crochets that i made so i'm gonna line it up correctly and then adjust to where i am and then i'm going to go through that and this is what i'm basically gonna do so if you're familiar with sewing or the basics of sewing then this might seem easier to you but if you don't understand what you're gonna do is just go back and forth through both loops of your single crochet and then we're going to pull out our hair what go through the hole that is just there and we're always gonna go on the same like row so keep that in mind and we're just going to pull through back and forth and on the other side we're going to go through the back right here come through the front and that is what we're going to do for the entire row make sure that it's nice and tight but obviously not too tight to a point where they scrunch together keep it nice and loose and we're just going to go back and forth up until we reach the halfway point and now i've sewed in half of the like bottom part so that there's this like opening and now we're gonna add on our like scrunchy parts and like the chains and to do this i am going to be focusing on adding everything into the middle just like i did in this jellyfish so we're gonna grab the side with the most string obviously since there's two sides or well whatever so this has three so obviously i'm just gonna put this up and in the middle and now i don't really mean the middle middle i just mean that i'm gonna be focusing around the center instead of like outside to like actually connect it you're gonna grab a slimmer like crochet hook you're gonna slip it through any any space you want but i would focus rather in the middle or in the center i'm gonna grab one of the chains or string sorry pull it through and then we're going to grab the other string and pull them through separate like holes 
if that makes sense so here i'm gonna grab one through and then right here without letting the other string slip through and the reason that i did it through separate ones is that so i can tie them together so just make a regular knot so that it does not come apart so i'm just gonna tie a bunch of random knots make sure that it is fully secure and won't open since this part is covered up anyway you won't really be able to notice it and now you've connected your first scrunch part so you can connect your others as well so let's just grab this one like the scrunchie that we just did we are just going to repeat the same thing so grab one through grab another one through mm, more here grab another one through right now i'm going to pull this up tight and we are going to again tie knots like so so we have it secured once again we're going to do that with the last one as well just like so and now we are going to connect the chains and for the chains it's i mean relatively simple or similar and or similar kind of both we're just gonna grab one of either side for this is irrelevant since they both have loose ends on both sides so we're just gonna stick our hook through anywhere and for the chain part technically i mean if you want to have them more visible you can put them outside like on a ring outside basically um so not like mix in the middle and that is what i'm gonna do so i'm just gonna move them further out like in the middle circle not really in the center but more in the middle right and then once they're in here i'm just gonna leave them since i'm going to be tying them together with other like chains so slipping that together and yeah you may notice that these aren't really close but that's fine i'm just gonna be securing it in a way that i can so And once you have tied your knots, everything should be connected. And now after you've checked that every placement is good and everything is relatively secure, because this is kind of the last chance you have to securing it before it gets like just really annoying. So you really want to make sure that you have everything in a tight knot. So now once you've checked if everything is good, we're going to continue on closing this whole like once and for all and this is the point where you would also be adding your pillow stuffing but i do not have any so i'm just going to be using some a pathetic amount of yarn scraps i don't have any yarn scraps at the moment because i just moved and i don't necessarily keep them but if you do or if you have any pillow like stuffing i would definitely recommend putting them in there just to make the figure a bit more like big i guess if you can understand that since if you don't add it in like i am not going to you can just poke it in and if you have it closed you can't go into the middle and puff it up you're gonna have to like maneuver it so that it kind of works out it, it works without pillow stuffing because i am gonna do it without pillow stuffing but i would recommend it honestly if you have it just use it you know and once you've like sealed it off completely you are basically done besides this like strand that's left but for me i'm just gonna weave it in so what i mean is i'm going to go through like let's say five stitches that i already closed off but we're just gonna go back and forth and basically weave it in so that there's a point where we can just cut it off without having to fear it opening up again since it has been weaved in back and forth long enough for it to just not be able to do that anymore i hope that makes sense but i mean honestly i don't know so i'm just gonna cut it off as close as i can so you can't really notice it and that is basically how you make your jellyfish that is amazing and now you can actually use this string to attach it to the ceiling and i'll show you how so you're just gonna grab a string length is whatever you want it to be just gonna punch it through the middle or hook go around the the middle of the thing and if you have uh, like pillow stuffing it may be difficult but trust me it will work eventually we're gonna grab the string just pull it through somehow without like tangling everything and then now it's on the string but obviously it's like loose we are going to be tying a bunch of knots at the bottom and now i mean it should 
technically be fine i mean like that is kind of how i did it obviously if you didn't tie enough knots it won't hold but for me it does proof i'm actually really proud of this and it looks so cute and i love it so yeah um oh wait this is the outro part anyways thank you guys so much for watching i hope this tutorial was clear enough if you guys have any questions make sure to comment them down below i will make sure to read them and reply to them if you enjoyed this video please make sure to like subscribe well comment if this project worked out for you if you make this on tiktok or something then be sure to post it and tag me since i would love absolutely love to see your projects and how they turned out i hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching bye bye